Uh, my name is Gen Li. I'm currently uh, also a professor from uh, Technical University of Denmark. Uh, today we have this uh, HBPS Young Professional Virtual Live uh, event, and this is the first uh, event of our uh, activities. Uh, this is a series of uh, activities in the future time. We have more universities to present their facilities, their lab, and their institute. So all of uh, our audience from all around the world are welcome to uh, join us to learn from uh, different uh, famous universities around the world, our research institute, to know their research facilities and uh, their uh, graduate, undergraduate, uh, postgraduate uh, programs. So for today, we have this uh, uh, first one, uh, virtual live from uh, uh, the University of NIT, uh, Katalikat, India. And we have our host, uh, Wisnu. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. I think now you can start to, yeah. yeah, you can start your uh, your schedules. Firstly, you will present something, right? And first of all, you can introduce yourself and then start today's uh, schedule. Okay, over to you. So, uh, you. yeah. Yeah, so why, uh, why should, Mr. Vaishad will be the one who will be presenting the uh, small presentation about our institute. So we'll, uh, uh, I think he is uh, uh, not present in this uh, video. Uh, okay. So about uh, uh, me, I, my name is Vishnu, and along with me, I have uh, Vaishak. Uh, so we are uh, our PhD students from National Institute of Technology, Calicut, uh, India. So it is in uh, a state called Kerala, which is at the southernmost uh, part of uh, India. Uh, so, uh, so I'll uh, just. Uh, uh, mute myself and I'll try to contact Vaishak. Okay, sure. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hello? Yes, we can hear Hi. you clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm having these microphone issues on and off. Okay. I'm sorry. So uh, thank you, thank you, uh, <laughs> Dr. Jainli, and thank you, Vishnu. Yeah, uh, I am Vaishakti. I am a research scholar at NIT Calicut, India. So uh, I am the current chair of the student run chapter, uh, Power and Energy Society, and Right Ripley. So I will be giving a very brief introduction about our college, uh, which is National Institute of Technology, uh, Calicut, Kerala, India. So let me uh, share my screen. Yes, please. Yes, we can now see your screen, but I think you need to swipe your screen. Yeah, now uh, I think uh, it is visible, right? Yeah, but uh, I think you need to swipe your presentation because now we are seeing your another screen, not the main screen. Okay, you are not able to see the slide screen, or are, were you, are you able to Ooh. see my... We are seeing your uh, presenter view mode screen, not the main screen. Okay. Or you can so... click uh, on the top left corner, the second one, top left, second one. Okay. Second, second, the second one. Yeah, click there, swipe. Swipe, okay. Yeah, now it's okay. Working. Now it's fine, right? Okay, Perfect. thank you. Right. Yeah. you. So, yeah, so National Institute of Technology, Calicut, it is an engineering college uh, which is established in 1961 in Kerala, which is a state in India. And uh, this institute started by the name of Regional Engineering College, Kerala, and later it got uh, renamed as National Institute of Technology, which happened as a mission of Government of India. Uh, where so many regional engineering colleges in different states were transformed to national institutes. So by doing that, these institutes gained much more popularity, much more funds and more direct attention from the government of India. 
so uh, this is this is how national institute of technology started and later this status of nat came in 2002 so from 2002 onwards it is called as national institute of technology calicut before that it was called as regional engineering college or calicut regional engineering college now uh, this campus is uh, you are uh, you may be aware that kerala is one of the beautiful states in india and the campus spreads over 1250 acres of land and that too calicut is one of the most popular districts in the state of kerala and one of the most beautiful district for food culture and one of the cultural capitals of kerala that is also calicut so a rich variety of culture food and different kind of hereditary elements meet together in Kerala and this National Institute of Technology is located in exact heart of this district and it spreads across 1250 acres and it has all the kind of facilities that any international institutions can offer uh, like uh, li uh, libraries, uh, classrooms, uh, laboratory facilities, uh, sports complexes, even this is a residential campus so even residential facilities for all the scholars, all the faculties, all the students and everyone. And NITC offers, so National Institute of Technology Calicut is acronymed as NITC and it offers a lot of programs uh, in undergraduate, postgraduate and doctoral levels and it has more than uh, 10 undergraduate programs and about uh, 30 postgraduate programs and 13 doctoral post uh, doctoral programs going on mainstream and there are so many subdivisions going on under these mainstreams. And this institute has more than 300 plus uh, faculty members all are uh, qualified from highly reputed institutes from national wise or international levels and around 300 plus members are currently working in NIT Calicut and we have a strong focus on our uh, research facilities and placements are another thing that we focus and you can see an image here that is one of the recent uh, we can see here the director and deputy director on the left side and signing a member of a memorandum of understanding with the university in UK, uh, Belfast. Uh, so that happened recently. So similarly, we have a lot of uh, MOU signing going on with different international universities as well as companies. Recently, we signed one more mem MOU with a Bosch, uh, which is located in Germany. But Bosch Coimbatore, we signed a memorandum. And for that, we are planning to start a collaborative MTech master's program for electric vehicles. So it will be facilitated by both NAT Calicut and Bosch. So similarly, we have a lot of such activities going on. So the campus is always trying to bridge the gap between the academy and the industry, as well as the mediocre academy and research. So this campus is trying very hard to push the students to excel themselves and find their uh, life purpose for their life and make them meaningful so and to give more insight about NIT Calicut I can share you some more details regarding the placement so uh, last year NIT Calicut were witnessed uh, more than thousand plus placements and this was the biggest placement history in India for a national level institute and we were able to place students with an average salary of 12.4 LPAs. So this data I recently extracted from the placement site of NIT Calicut. And we can also see a small graph showing the number of offers that we NIT Calicut were receiving or NIT Calicut were able to give students in the recent past. So uh, this is all about NIT Calicut as a, a brief introduction. So because of this time limit, I may not be able to dive much deep into the uh, possibilities or the offers what NIT Calicut has for its students. So that's all about uh, NIT Calicut. So thank you so much. So now uh, for this virtual lab presentation, we will be showing you some videos uh, regarding the laboratory facilities available at NIT Calicut and uh, this Contributors, main contributors for this video are from electrical department and electronics and communication department. So with the shortest available time, we were able to pull off the facilities from three or four labs. So maybe if uh, in the future collaborations, we look forward for producing more and more. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, so uh, shall I move on to the video?
Hello, I think we cannot hear from the voice. No voice of the video. Okay, uh, the voice of the video is not uh, audible or is it not? Uh... We cannot hear it. Okay. Uh, so Maybe we'll when to... you share it, share the screen, if you click share the video as well. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me... Yeah, maybe you quit sharing and uh, resharing. Uh, present, let me present the video file then. Okay. So let me go to my desktop and... Yeah. Research scholar at National now is it working? Technology yeah, now we can hear. Today I shall give yeah. a brief okay. introduction about the high voltage testing lab that we have in our electrical engineering department. Normally, the operating voltage does not severely stress the power system insulation, but special circumstances like polluted condition make the operating voltage to cause problem to the external insulation. Thus, operating voltage determines the dimensions of the insulation which forms a part of the generation, transmission and distribution equipment. The voltage stress on the power system arises due to different over voltages also. They may be either external or internal. External over voltages are those associated with lightning discharges and internal over voltages may be due to the changes in the operating conditions like switching operations, fluctuations in load or the generation or also may be due to the fault that occurs in the power system. Thus, the design of systems insulation is a major area which we concentrate on. A dielectric is an electrical insulator that an applied electric field can polarize. Dielectrics may be classified as solid, liquid or gas. For example, in a high voltage transformer, the paper or the press board forms a solid dielectric, the transformer oil forms the liquid dielectric and air the gaseous dielectric. Thus, the power system must not only withstand its rated voltage but also over voltages. The magnitude and type of the test voltage also varies with the rated voltage of the equipment and there are various national and international standards for the same. Coming to the three different types of tests, first the power frequency test. In order to check the withstand capability of the equipment, the apparatus is subjected to one minute test under 50 Hz frequency and its test voltage is set at a voltage greater than the expected working voltage in order to simulate a stress-like situation likely to be encountered by the equipment during years of service. For indoor installation, the tests are carried out under dry conditions and for outdoor installation, both wet and dry conditions, the tests are carried out in order to simulate a rain-like conditions. Now coming to the impulse test, in order to check the withstand capability of the apparatus under lightning and switching impulse. The impulse tests are carried out using standard lightning impulse of 1.2 bar 50 microseconds and standard switching impulse of 250 bar 2500 microseconds. On the right side you can see an impulse waveform having a shorter front time and longer tail time. The DC tests are performed on the equipment generally for research purposes. Coming to the applications of high voltage testing, it is generally carried out on electrical apparatus in, at a developmental stage or also before commissioning. They are also carried out for research purposes and also mainly the DC test is carried out when an equipment can be subjected to very large current when tested with AC voltage or which can cause a puncture to the system under testing conditions. Now we shall see a short video of high voltage DC testing using a vertical sphere gap arrangement. This is a high voltage testing transformer in 5 kVA, 220 bar 100 kV output. It is, this AC voltage is rectified using the two diodes here and then given to an RC circuit which gives a high voltage DC output across the vertical sphere gap.
26 degree of freedom ABB IRB robot 1200 robot which is a part of industrial power lab of electrical engineering department myself Meghna Suresh junior research fellow of National Institute of Technology Calicut ABB IRB 1200 robot is a 6 axis industrial robot with a payload capacity of 5 to 7 kg and it is being designed specifically for pick and place operations. It can be mounted on floor or in inverted position or on a wall in any angle around x axis or y axis. It is having a self weight of 54 kg which is of compact shape and has a reachability of 700 mm and also a position repeatable accuracy of 0.02 mm. The components of the robot system mainly consist of controller and manipulator. The controller consists of main CPU, power distribution board, power supply, memory, variable frequency drive, SMPS and its associated distributor. Degree of freedom is nothing but it is the number of freedom or number of ways number of independent ways in which a robot arm can be moved each joint or axis on the robot introduces a degree of freedom each degree of freedom can be a slider rotary or other type of actuator three of the degree of freedom allows translational motion whereas three of them allows rotational motion Six degrees of freedom are enough to allow the robot to reach all positions and orientations in 3D space. Now moving on to the robot specifications. There are six axes of rotation. In this particular slide it is being mentioned the working range as well as the maximum speed which can be attained by each axis. Modes of operation of this robot is classified into two manual mode and auto mode in manual mode a manipulator works according to the instructions specified by the user whereas in auto mode manipulator works continuously according to the instructions unless stop command is activated the change from manual mode to auto mode or vice versa can be done in the robot with the help of a key SCADA Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. This facility is available in our industrial power lab in the Electrical Engineering Department, National Institute of Technology, Calicut, India. Uh, my name is Vishnu. I am a research scholar at the National Institute of Technology, Calicut, India. So SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, and it is a control system architecture which comprises of computers data communication network and graphical user interface and it is used to supervise and control complex machines and processes. It provides a remote access uh, to the processes uh, and machines that we are controlling. In the test setup that we have, we have uh, a SCADA system which controls the operation of an electric power system. So we through a computer uh, through remote access we can control the various uh, various elements of electrical power system. There are mainly four modules in the SCADA arrangement. The first module is the station module which would mimic the operation of a generating station 
and it will be the one which will be mimicking the power generation process in the electric power system. So first we have the station module which will be mimicking the generation of a power system, generation part of the power system. So we have a transformer uh, which is taking input three phase from the sub, uh, grid and converting it, stepping it down and then giving it to the secondary. So it will be mimicking a generating station. We have a relay also to control the faults happening and resetting faults which will be explained later in the experiment. So as we can as we can see inside the module, uh, we have a, a DC power supply, we have a transformer, we have again one more transformer. We have a tap changing transformer. We have an array of CTs and PTs uh, which will be used to take measure the different parameters and show in the uh, LCD displays. And we have PLCs uh, which act as the controllers for the whole uh, whole module. Now the generated power will be transmitted through the transmission module and the transmission module in the transmission module we can have various combinations of um, transmission parameters we could change the line resistances the line lengths the compensation that we provide and all this can be pro done in the transmission module this is the transmission module the transmission module is acting like the line in the circuit uh, so with this we can make sure that we have uh, different we can make sure that so many parameters we can change like uh, line length and uh, compensation types of compensation also we can add and some faults also we can mimic through this module we have an array of resistors uh, and inductors along with capacitors which can act as uh, which can mimic the properties of the line along with the conductors used to uh, control the switching of the parameters. Now once the power is transmitted through the transmission module, we have a load module and the load module uh, we can connect various types of loads uh, that is resistive, inductive, capacitive loads at various combinations we can connect and we can study its effect and that can be done through the load module. So in this, uh, we'll be resistances and inductances uh, which uh, mimics the properties of induction motors or other lighting loads which normally come at the end of the line. Uh, so for that uh, we have a variable resistive and inductive load along with capacitors which are used for uh, like end, end, end compensation so like shunt compensation and along with that we have several conductors to control the whole mode. Now the fourth module is the distribution module which would mimic the operation of a distribution system in the power system. So we have different feeder arrangements which could be connected uh, to study various effects. Now in order for the operation of the power system or to mimic the operation of the power system we also need metering and protection devices and uh, all the metering is done through current transformers and potential transformers and we will measure voltage, current and power, active power, reactive power and power factor. And we also have relays for protection and we have overcurrent relay and earth fault relay to uh, ensure the safe operation of the module. So what are the capabilities of this uh, SCADA arrangement? So first is we can control the power transmission architecture. We can have different line lengths. We can have different line resistances uh, and inductance combinations. And we can study its effect on the power flow. Uh, we can also conduct all types of fault analysis on this arrangement. We have sufficient protection system uh, to protect the system during these fault conditions. So we can simulate the action of a line to ground fault, double line to ground fault, uh, a triple line to ground fault uh, and the overcurrent and earth fault relays would be activated um, as a protection devices. Now we can also uh, have uh, the we can also study the effect of series and shunt compensation on the transmission lines. We can add various series and shunt compensations uh, into the line and study its effect on the power flow. We can also study 
various types of loading uh, on the system and how it will affect the operation of the power system. We can have different combinations of resistance, inductance and capacitance connected and study its effect on the active and reactive power flow. Uh, we can perform a power factor correction on the load side uh, by adding shunt capacitance to the lines and we can study its effect on the power flow. Now the entire arrangement of power generation, transmission and distribution can be controlled remotely uh, through a computer and we can decide what all actions can be done, what all actions needs to be taken on the system through a computer. So the remote act remote control of the entire system is also possible. Now we can have, we can also study the operation of various metering and protection devices which is connected to the system. So these are the capabilities of this CADA arrangement for controlling the power system operation that we have in our lab. Welcome everyone to this presentation on equipments available at Project Lab EC Department, NIT Calicut. First, uh, we'll be discussing about RF Mantron sputtering unit. Sputtering is a physical vapor deposition process for thin film deposition. Highly ionized atoms in plasma sputters off the target atoms with the help of RF or DC power and gets deposited onto the substrate. This process occurs at high vacuum, that is uh, generation minus six M bar, so that impurity or contamination is not present and uniform and high quality film is deposited. The equipment that uh, we are having at the lab is of make VR technologies. High vacuum is uh, attained through cumulative action of roughing pump and diffusion pump. Roughing pump can uh, achieve a pressure of up to 10 raised to minus 2 M bar and diffusion pump up to 10 raised to minus 6 M bar. We are having a two target system. Uh, targets of size uh, three inch and two inch can be placed inside the chamber. Gas inlet provision for argon, nitrogen and oxygen is available. Plasma created in argon atmosphere. RF or DC power modules available for plasma. Uh, cooling of our diffusion pump is through water chiller unit. This is a step-by-step -step procedure for operating the sputtering unit. Ensure all valves are closed. Turn on the mains, chiller unit, RP and DP pumps. Create low vacuum using roughing pump. Create high vacuum using diffusion pump. Allow argon gas to chamber through inlet valve. Create plasma by providing RF for DC power. Allow the reactive gases if needed as per the experiment. Open the substrate shield for deposition to start. Substrate rotation and heating provision is available. Deposition time, flow rate of inlet gases, base pressure and working pressure depends on the recipe of the experiment. Once uh, deposition is over, turn off the power to chamber electrodes, close the inlet gas valves, turn off pumps by giving sufficient time for DP to cool down, turn off mains and chiller. Substrate can be removed after venting the chamber. Chamber to be kept in vacuum after every use to prevent entry of contaminants. For demo purpose, uh, we'll be using this uh, glass slide as a substrate. This is the sputtering unit setup. Here, uh, you are having different power modules uh, on top there are the pressure gauges and uh, substrate rotation and heater nodes are available along with the PAD controller for controlling that uh, heat option uh, these are the power modules uh, to matching network and uh, uh, other modules for the RF uh, power and uh, below this is the DC power module and below you will be 
having the uh, features for turning on the mains rp and uh, dp pumps uh, this is the chamber to the side of the chamber uh, can see the uh, gas inlet line and air vent valve this is the air vent valve and uh, this is the valve to control the gas inlet here on top of the chamber you are having certain loops and uh, some connectors um, actually this is a two target system so you are having uh, uh, these round loops Two nodes are there, one at the back side. <coughs> uh, this is for shielding the targets. This is for the first target, and that's for the second target. And uh, this connector is uh, used for providing power to the system. Uh, either the RF power or DC power can be provided. This ground cable is used for RF power. And another black cable is there for DC power. Uh, this is the chiller unit which is used for cooling the diffusion pump. Sputtering is done in the presence of plasma uh, at high vacuum so that uh, a high quality film deposition is uh, uh, attained. So, here uh, for obtaining high vacuum, we will be having two pump setups so inside inside you can see uh, one roughing pump as well as a diffusion pump will be used the white color uh, which is shown here is the, is the diffusion pump and bottom of that diffusion pump we will be having a heater so it basically works on the principle of heating the oil molecules then uh, this oil molecule oil molecule that vapors will grab the air molecules from the chamber and push out the air that is how it works inside uh, the side of the diffusion pump you can see the roughing pump as well so here first of all we'll uh, start with placement of the substrate so first i'll be uh, venting on the chamber So here you can see the two targets. This is first target, this is three inch, and uh, this is the another target, second target, two inch. So here we are using only one target. So the uh, second target will be shielded completely, and here this is the one here the substrate holder. So your substrate will be placed here on top. You can see that the substrate is placed on top. So now the chamber will be closed.
slowly the uh, power will be increased. Next, we'll be discussing about the thermal evaporation unit at our project lab. Thermal evaporation is another physical deposition method. Uh, it is based on melting of the source material and uh, getting it deposited onto the substrate. Process occurs at high vacuum to reduce the presence of impurities or contaminants. Persistence heating of the source mate material is done for melting. The equipment that we are having at our lab is of make via technologies. High vacuum is achieved through roughing pump and molecular pump. Provision for placing two sources inside the chamber. Source material placed on evaporator or boards. Melting point of the board should be greater than that of the source material. Substrate to be fixed onto the substrate holder. This is used for deposition of contacts through thermal evaporation. The procedure for operating thermal evaporation unit. Open the chamber, place the substrate, add required number of source material onto the evaporator board. Close the chamber, ensure all valves are closed. Vacuum the chamber using roughing and turbo molecular pumps. Once high vacuum is reached, provide LT supply to the board. Gradually increase the voltage, noting down the current in primary and secondary. Once the required heat energy is obtained from melting, source material starts to melt. Turn off the power once required thickness is achieved or materials uh, Entire material is melted. Turn off LT supply, pumps, and mains once the process is completed. Chamber can be opened for substrate removal after a cooling time of two hours. the aluminum pellets this will be placed onto the evaporator
Next, uh, we'll be discussing about the DC probe station and project lab. DC probe station is used for probing fabricated devices. It includes source meter of Kately make and probe station with microscope and four probes. It can measure IV characteristics and transient response. Uh, this is the source meter. Uh, so this equipment uh, along with the uh, DC probe station which is shown here. Uh, it is having a microscope as well as a check where the device will be placed. So this is the check. Uh, here the device will be placed and it will be probed using these manipulators. Uh, these manipulators will be connected uh, to the source meter. This cable, through this cable it will be connected to the source meter. And the source meter will be connected by USB cable to system. So through software, uh, the IV, character IV characteristics floating as well as uh, transient response etc. Uh, can be obtained. So uh, this is one of the device that we have fabricated here. This is basically a silicon SiO2 wafer on top of which uh, uh, ZNO and uh, tin film is fabricated and uh, then two contacts, source and drain has been uh, uh, deposited. So here in this uh, we, have, we can see nine devices are there. So here in uh, one of this device will be probing. So this is the check, the device will be placed here. Gated device. So our gate, this, this probe is used to connect to a gate. So this is directly uh, connected to the chuck. Uh, the back gate connection will be uh, available there. And uh, this is the so this is the drain, and uh, these are the source connections. So here in the software, we'll be enabling both the source measurement units, that is SMU one and SMU two. Our gate is connected to SMU1 and our source is, uh, our drain is connected to SMU2. So here, um, uh, the sweep mode as well as the current limit and the uh, source points etc. will be given. And uh, since here we are going to take the output carrier, our SMU1 will be in stepper mode, that is the VGS will be in stepper mode. So here we will be using 6 stepper points. And then the that will be included. This is the output care of the safe device. Hello everyone. Welcome to today's presentation on microgrid test board. We are from the Hybrid Energy Systems Lab of Electrical Engineering Department, National Institute of Technology, Calicut. The slide is presented by Sunil B. Chandra, research scholar, National Institute of Technology, Calicut, India. As per the definition of NREL, a microgrid is a group of interconnected loads and distributed sources that acts as a single controllable entity for the grid. A microgrid may include various types of sources and also various loads so that there is a composite interconnection between the loads and the sources. The basic advantage of microgrid is that it can improve reliability, resilience and also it can reduce the energy cost for the consumers as well as promote green energy by facilitating the connection of renewable energy sources extensively to the grid. 
for laboratory studies of microgrid we may make use of something called microgrid test bed this test bed facilitates the interconnections of various types of sources mostly renewable resources and they may help us for the study and analysis of various processes and the problems associated with the interconnections a microgrid test bed may have various sources as said, said like solar wind diesel battery etc and can have possibility of local loads or connect to the grid the basic working of microgrid test bed is with the help of power electronic interfaces mostly dc dc converters or choppers and also the inverters to allow the connection between the sources and the loads for facilitating smoother power transfer a well defined control system should be there to produce the various pulses for the power electronic switches with the help of feedback control the qualities of a microgrid test bed may include smooth seamless transfer between grid connected and islanded modes grid connected mode is when the microgrid is connected to the grid whereas islanded mode is when it is connected to a local load the another qualities needed for a test bed includes the provision for protection in order to capture and prevent high fall current and also the provisions for voltage and frequency stability so in our test bed we are having a solar source which is connected to a chopper then a battery system and then an emulated wind source solar source receives power from the solar panel which is kept as a rooftop system whereas our wind plant is actually emulated so microgrid facilitates test bed facilitates the both the physical systems as well as the emulated systems with the help of these systems we can analyze and study the various possibilities and probabilities with microgrid interconnection thank you all for the time being and please do contact in case of any doubts so uh, thank you all for uh, being here uh, so uh, this is all we were able to pull off in such a short notice okay thank you very much i just check our youtube channel but i think there are no comments and questions there 
okay so i will share my screen one more time uh, here i have my list of resource people uh, who worked behind this so the yeah. details will be shared in the screen sure just a minute yeah now i think uh, this resource people details are visible okay yeah so we have uh, around eight people who were all our research scholars uh, who worked behind this to put all these videos together and so if anyone are interested all of them are open for any kind of queries or anything so all there uh, one person has provided his uh, personal mail id and all others have provided their uh, nit calicut email id so if any queries are there uh, free feel free to contact them no issues or uh, we can share the ieee ps uh, mail id also uh, so that if any uh, queries that we can address to the proper resource people that we will do yeah okay so thank Very you good. so much uh, thank you so much as well for your efforts it's great event today you share all your facilities here it's a super excellent outstanding and um, uh, if we have no other comments from the floor i think we can close for today and the thanks again for your efforts and time uh Viska and uh, Visnu, okay. Thank you for your time and uh, all the efforts you made for this event. Thank okay. you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Bye thank bye. You, sir. Uh, okay, sir. Bye. Have a good time, sir. Bye bye. Download the Google Home app on a phone or.